Your Excellency, Mr. President, His Excellency, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, Excellencies, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Mr. President, it's a great honor for me to address this gathering today. I bring you warm greetings from the government and the people of South Africa. This year, 2024, marks 30 years of constitutional democracy in our country, South Africa. Our constitution, which serves as a guide to our foreign policy, took inspiration from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other key international instruments of international law. Our South African Bill of Rights recognizes the equality, dignity, and worth of every person. We ensured when we wrote the Constitution that our Bill of Rights would not be on a standard lower than that of international legal instruments. This incorporation of international law into our Constitution has strongly influenced the nature and practice of our foreign policy. And we have, as post-apartheid South Africa, made remarkable progress in implementing our Bill of Rights. We have noted with interest the language that we sometimes use as we debate on these matters in this House. And it has been intriguing to note the discourse when we speak of Russian aggression and then Israel war against Hamas. By implication of our language, all innocent Palestinians are members of Hamas and thus deserving of being killed while Russia practices aggression. This is a rather strange interpretation. And this is why we hold the belief that all of us have a collective duty to ensure that the Human Rights Council is always fit for and relevant to purpose. However, the current divisions on global breaches that are evident in the Council are impeding our nations from focusing on the victims of human rights in all regions of the world. We need to restrain ourselves from being party to the instrumentalization of the Council and address directly and firmly the current polarization, selectivity, and indeed double standards in relation to how we address together human rights matters. I've been rather alarmed as a novice listening in at the divisions that are apparent between us as the globe. In addition, we believe, as the High Commissioner stated this morning, that we need to overcome the binary view and logic that if you are not with us, you are against us. I come from a country and government that is experiencing the rather odd practice of having pieces of legislation against South Africa in one of the most significant democracies in the world because of the posture we've adopted with respect to the Israeli war against the Palestinian people. Mr. President, during this session, our country, South Africa, will continue its focus on the elimination of all forms of discrimination, particularly racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerances. Efforts to combat racism and the implementation of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action remain, in our view, critically important in the current geopolitical context. We are committed to a robust and coherent United Nations to ensure that all who yearn for freedom and self-determination enjoy support. Determined efforts by the United Nations family will guarantee freedom for the people of Palestine as well as the people of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. 
are countries committed to the advancement of their human rights and freedoms, and to all freedoms and human rights, not only in our country and continent of Africa, but for all peoples. This session occurs at a time when all of us are still reeling from atrocious incidents of conflicts that are made worse by unrestrained attacks on the innocent and vulnerable, including women and children. So it is appropriate for this forum, as has happened, to register our despair over a lack of respect for life and livelihood that we have observed in Gaza, in the West Bank, and certainly in Ukraine. South Africa calls for an immediate comprehensive ceasefire in Gaza, inclusive of hostage releases, the resumption of talks on a just solution to end the suffering of the Palestinian people, and unhindered and expanded humanitarian access to people in need of basic and critical services. I wonder what the world would have said if after South Africa had concluded its negotiation process, which ended apartheid, if the people of South Africa who were now free had gone around South Africa shooting down our former oppressors. I wonder how the world would have reacted then. Would we have been silent, watching a slaughter of that kind occur, or would we have stepped in because it would have been white citizens who would have been attacked by black people? What a terrible picture of our world to have. We believe that Israel must be called upon by its very powerful friends to implement the provisional measures pronounced by the International Court of Justice following our referral of the situation and the dire humanitarian situation of the people of Gaza to the World Court. It is absolutely correct, and we must always call out Hamas for its crimes against the innocent. But we must also deplore our inaction in seven decades of occupation. We note that very few of us have referred to occupation in our contributions to our deliberations today. It is unclear whether the occupation of some is acceptable to us, while the occupation of others is an infringement of the Charter. Surely, all occupation on whoever it is practiced is an infringement of the United Nations Charter. We remain, in conclusion, steadfast in advocating for international peace and security through inclusive dialogue and the peaceful political settlements of disputes just as we did with our own challenge. We believe this peaceful approach should become standard both in our continent Africa and in all disputes all over the world. We are, after all, an intellect global community. We are, after all, interdependent on one another. We need to recognize, therefore, that tolerance is the only precursor to peace. What we need to do is ensure that to address our global challenges, we all promote an equitable multilateral system, one in which global governance institutions are reformed to protect human rights for all, everywhere. We urge this council to act always to respond to all violations and abuses, and not to appear to respond depending on who and where the offense occurs. Honoring this mandate of rights for all will surely promote peace and security, a vital component of achieving our desired goal of sustainable development. We believe that in executing its mandate, this council has a vital obligation to ensuring world peace 
and equality for all. And we wish the council well in its work. I thank you, Mr. President. Do you think more nations should also show courage like South Africa did? Are you proud of South Africa's actions? Why did other nations that speak more of human rights fail to take this basic step? Let us know in the comment section if only African nations have taken the Palestine matter seriously. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.